All right, chapter 26, Latin American Colonies to Countries. So, uh, what we're going to do this video, we're going to do a quick recap of where we left off um, with, with Latin America. We're going to talk about revolutions. We're going to start with the Haitian Revolution, which we should get through in this video. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about Latin American society uh, and cultural things, social structures that are going to develop post-revolutions, post, you know, going from colonies to countries. Uh, then we're going to get into late 19th century developments. This is going to be a lot more of the United States of America, the great white white giant to the north. Um, that's what some people in Latin America referred to uh, the United States of America at this time as. Um, so we're going to talk about a little bit of America stuff at this time. Uh, if you haven't picked up on it, especially with the industrialization chapter uh, and a little bit with imperialism, this is the part where of history where America starts to rise up, the late 19th century uh, early 20th century is where we start to see the real rise of the United States of America. It's a slow burn, takes over 100 years, but this is where uh, that starts to develop. So we're going to talk a little bit more about America. All right, so where we left off with Latin America, if you look at the map here in the upper right-hand corner, this is what North and South America looked like pretty much at this time period. Remember, Spain split their uh, colonies up into two different chunks, two different viceroys. And uh, so you had the, the northern areas in which, you know, eventually Mexico used to be all of this area here including a good chunk of the United States of America. And then they had all their southern colonies. Uh, Brazil, of course, was owned by Portugal. There are going to be a few other uh, Europeans involved still, like the English and the Dutch and the French. We're not going to talk about them. In this chapter, we're going to primarily talk about how the Spanish lost all of these colonies and how the Portuguese lost Brazil. Brazil is really bizarre. Uh, all right, so Peninsulares. Remember, we talked about them. They were the people who were born in the Iberian Peninsula and then came over uh, to the New World, to North and South America, and held on all the political power. Because remember, the Spanish and Portuguese, they didn't use company rule. They tried to directly control their colonies with royal rule, royal authority. So people who were from the old world were always closer to power than the people who uh, were born over in this side of the world, even if they were white, right? Um, we talked already about some failed Creole mestizo revolts. Um, we talked about Tupac Amaru, right? And he tried. He claimed to be descended from the last Incan king, and he tried to uh, rise up uh, and was pushed down and terribly murdered, and anybody who was involved in his revolt was terribly slaughtered. Uh, the Spanish and Portuguese are really holding on, and they're using military force to control their colonies, these vast holdings that they have in the New World. Things are going to start changing, though. Spain and Portugal were losing their early edge. Uh, northern countries like England and France are going to start taking more uh, land and, and getting much more powerful. Uh, they're also they have better economic systems, uh, better political systems. Company rule was more efficient than vice royalties, uh, much more like free market basically. And so the northern colonies start to take off. Uh, meanwhile, Spain and Portugal start to lag behind. The big thing that's going to change, and the big reason why there's big revolutions during this time period, they're pretty much all linked to this, Napoleon. That's why Napoleon is so important to understand for history and his part of the French Revolution and European history, but Napoleon also leads to a lot of the rest of the world. This map, the reason it doesn't say New Spain anymore and, and you know Portuguese Brazil, the reason this map has changed is largely because of Napoleon. Uh, so it's hard to downplay Napoleon in history here. Uh, he had a huge impact on, on the... Uh, structure of North and South America. Okay, so that's going to be the huge power structure. Latin America, uh, you know, unlike Africa, unlike China, unlike India, and places that are also going to be conquered by Europeans during this imperialistic time period, will be much more connected to Europe, still is to this day. Uh, obviously, Spanish is the dominant language. It's a European language. Portuguese also in Brazil. Um, and so as a result, they're going to be heavily influenced by European and eventually also United States of America and the changes going on in those countries. The concept of Latin America, which is the term we all use, right, is largely created during this time period, and it's actually linked entirely to European nationalism. Um, a lot of you have probably used the words Latin America and never actually wondered where those terms came from. I mean, they don't speak Latin there, right? They're not uh, Roman people who came over here. Why do we say Latin America? Uh, that actually, these words here became popularized during this time period, and it has entirely everything to do with Europe uh, and another Napoleon, and we'll talk about that later. All right, so revolution. With the first one we're going to get through uh, in this video is Haiti. So Haiti, uh, it's a little island. It's actually half an island here. Uh, shares it with the Dominican Republic, Hispaniola. So Haiti, France used to own Haiti, and they made a fortune of it. This was the uh, one third of all of their overseas trade, and the primary market was sugar. 
and we've already already talked about sugar and the importance of sugar and the Atlantic trade and uh, colonization of the New World. Haiti was primarily used for sugar, and we've already talked about uh, how sugar was grown and how it was developed. It was used largely with African slave labor after the native populations were mostly killed off um, and overworked and through slavery and terrible things. So Haiti was almost entirely black African people, but the the ruling class were entirely uh, white, right? So if you've ever seen Pirates of the Caribbean, like the first movie of Pirates of the Caribbean, the dad is the governor of the island. Um, what they don't show in that movie would be literally thousands, if not tens of thousands of slaves working on sugar colonies. Um, puts a different spin on that movie. So anyway, slaves outnumber the French, uh, you know, white French people 10 to 1 uh, on average. And as a result, and we've talked about this before, it doesn't matter if it's Sparta, it doesn't matter if it's U.S. plantation slavery. When you have a huge mismatch, a huge mismatch of uh, a population like this, where a very small minority has to control a very large majority, oftentimes they lead to some of the worst abuses in history, some terrible things, because people will use fear and pain in order to control other people. It's easier and it's terrible. Um, and so Haiti was famous for having horrendous abuses of human life. Some of the worst examples from slavery. So that's kind of the background on Haiti. Let's talk about the revolution. So, France goes through its revolution. They are they're in the process of their revolution at this time period, and uh, you know their people in France are calling for you know the end of the first and second estate and equality and that people should have rights, um, and the average people should have rights. Well, these ideas start spreading to France's colonies as well too, including Haiti. And so many at first just you know the white people in Haiti. A lot of these. Uh, the ruling class, the owning class of people in Haiti start reading these words and they start saying, hey, these are great ideas. We really like these ideas. And some of the, the slave owners in Haiti start talking about having their own revolution and becoming an independent country. Um, however, the ideas then also move from just the white elite inside of Haiti society and they start moving down to uh, the, the masses of the people who live in Haiti. One of the most famous guys is going to be Toussaint L'Overture, and I'm not pronouncing his name correctly, I'm sure. He's an interesting character. Um, he uh, was a former slave. He came free. I believe he was driving a cart or something like this. He was largely self uh, at this time period. Uh, that was his primary job. But he was largely self-educated, and he interacted a lot with the white elite people, but also with the average you know, enslaved people in Haiti. And so he was kind of a uh, in-between kind of person in society. Toussaint L'Overture uh, learns about the French Revolution, learns about the ideals of the French Revolution. He says, we want these for ourselves. You're talking about liberty and equality and fraternity, you know, freedom. Liberty is just a fancier word for freedom. Uh, equality and brotherhood. These are the things you're asking for for yourselves, and yet you own slaves. And Toussaint L'Overture says, this is ridiculous. We want the same things for the jeunes du couleur, the gentlemen of color, the men of color, you know, uh, African people in, in Haiti. And so he starts to rally about, and there's other people, of course, he's just the most famous name, but he starts to rally the enslaved people of Haiti against their French masters, and a very, very violent revolution takes place. Um, I mean, this is probably one of the most famous pictures. You sometimes see this on AP exams of people being lynched. And uh, just to point this out now, this is a horrible way to die. Hanging in general is probably not my preferred way to go. Lynching is where you put a note, rope around somebody's neck and then pull them up. Um, hanging somebody they drop quickly and their neck breaks and you you die relatively quickly uh lynching is where you are basically strangled out this is this is a way you kill somebody if you really hate them and you have to understand the white owner owners of haiti were so horrendous that when their time came and the revolution finally came there were terrible abuses back against the white people who had done these horrible abuses against the haitians I'm not justifying it. I'm not saying that this is the right thing to do. I'm just telling you that's why it happened. So a very, very violent revolution takes place. Uh, and it was successful. So the Haitian Revolution is successful. Now, it's not the French are going to try to take back Haiti, and we'll talk about that in a second. But it is a successful revolution. They largely kill off a lot of the white people, if not all the white people. Um, Haiti today is pretty much 100% African people. Uh, they're French-speaking still to this day, so it seems a little strange to some people. That in Latin America, right, there's a French-speaking half of an island that's entirely black. But really, Haiti is a good representation of the history of the Caribbean. Europeans came over there, enslaved African people for sugar production, 
and then uh, brought them over there. Uh, and, and that's the legacy of it. And so Haiti today kind of exists with that legacy. Haiti is the only successful slave revolt in history. I wish I could tell you that's uh, different and that there were multiple ones. Um, it's not the only slave revolt in history. There are many, but this is the only successful slave revolt where the slaves actually overthrew their owners and maintained their freedom. Uh, kind of talk about it in a little bit later on, but it, pro sides and downsides. During the revolution, when the Haitian Revolution was going on, the newspapers reported it and said, oh, it'll be easily put down. It's just these enslaved people. They won't ever be able to win. Then they did win. They became very, they successfully conquered Haiti. Downside of that is that the newspapers and the Western world and everybody else basically turned their back entirely on Haiti. A lot of people refused to trade with Haiti. So Haiti became a very profitable sugar uh, slave plantation. But when they gained freedom, they become the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. And I believe that's still true to this day. Uh, meanwhile, Louverture will be captured at one point during the revolution, and he's imprisoned where he dies from pneumonia, which is kind of a depressing end. But he's an interesting character in history, uh, kind of a sad story at the end of it. A lot of these Latin American revolutions are gonna, revolutionaries are going to have sad stories. All right, so Napoleon's reaction. Napoleon tries to reconquer Haiti. He's, you know, not going to let this go sitting down and they need the money right because france is going broke and so they need the money that comes in from Haiti, haitian sugar it's one third of all their overseas income so napoleon sends an army so he sends an army led by his brother-in-law and he sends a massive fleet of ships and army and they get to haiti and they basically don't even get off the ships as soon as they get to haiti yellow fever spreads like wildfire throughout the french military these europeans who aren't used to the caribbean and aren't used to the heat and definitely not used to the disease they land and they're going to try to reconquer but about half of the army is killed off by yellow fever uh that's going to put a damper on it. I believe his, uh, Napoleon's brother-in-law actually uh, was sick from yellow fever as well, too. So they lose. The French, this great French military led, you know, not directly, but led by Napoleon, um, was his famous great conqueror, can't even reconquer um, an island, you know, half of an island. Uh, it's pretty embarrassing. Napoleon is a very arrogant man. He doesn't like being embarrassed, and he gets incredibly frustrated and incredibly angry at what's going on in uh in haiti and he's like you know what forget about it i don't care <laughs> so he's just going to focus more on russia and that's going to work out great for him right but he's like i'm just going to focus more on europe i'm going to conquer europe and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to conquer haiti um, he wanted to conquer the world most likely in the long run but he's like right now i can't split my forces i can't send troops over to haiti where they're going to lose the disease i'm just going to conquer russia no problems there that'll be easy then we'll worry about this later very famously, and this is an APUS thing as well, too. Um, <clears throat> the United, uh, This was during Thomas Jefferson's presidency. Uh, America sends representatives to speak with the French about possibly uh, purchasing some of uh, the French territory in the Americas, especially the port of New Orleans, uh, which is an incredibly important trading port. And so we send a delegation of American uh, diplomats to go meet with the French uh, ambassadors. But apparently, and this is according to the historical record, the Americans were blown away because the French came in there with their offer from Napoleon, and it was like pennies on the acre. Uh, Napoleon just sold America, the, what's now we call the Louisiana Purchase, all of French North America, just dumped it onto us because he uh, was so frustrated with what was going on in Haiti. So this is shortly after Haiti. Napoleon's just like, you know what? I'm out of the New World entirely, focusing on Europe. America, if you want all this territory, great. I'll probably conquer you later and take it again later. So you can have New Orleans and you can take basically all of this land. It doubled the size of the United States of America. Now, obviously, this land right now, Native Americans, the Plains and people like there, um, not a lot of the French weren't big colonizers. So there weren't a lot of European things in there. You've probably learned about uh, Lewis and Clark and that sort of stuff. Uh, before uh, where we started to send people to explore this area. It has a huge impact in American history. So in American history, and like doubling the size of our country really, American history is kind of linked with Haitian history. The Haitian Revolution made it possible for us to buy all of this land for practically nothing. Uh, so Napoleon, Haiti, all lead to the United States of America. History is kind of weird that way, how everything's interconnected. That's for this one.